In this video, you'll learn everything you need to know about photo restoration in Photoshop. We will go over all of the basic information you need to know and understand. I'll give you advice and walk you through the entire process. I'll show you how to turn a photo from your smartphone into scan, then explain how to restore it and deal with common types of damage, and finally, how to enhance it manually and polish restored photo with AI. Let's get started. Okay, first thing first we need to do is to crop the original image. It will help to make image look like it was originally actually scanned and not just taking a photo with your phone. You can activate the crop tool by clicking the C button or selecting it from the tool panel. Now you can try to use perspective crop tool. It was specifically created in order to transform photographs that was taken from the three-dimensional world into flat images. Don't worry if you don't understand how the tool works, it's actually pretty easy. All you need to do is to select all four corners of the original image, trying to align sides and then just click enter. If after confirming the photograph it still looks kind of stretched and wrong, all you need to do is just press Ctrl Z and try once more. After a few attempts you should have the image that is good enough to proceed. Amazing! Now we can start repairing the damage. Repairing the damage is actually often pretty easy task, especially a photo is not very badly damaged. All you need to do is to create new layer. Then you can use clone stamp tool or healing brush tool in order to fix most of the damage. Since this process is very repetitive, I'll speed up the video. So, firstly, you need to often, and I mean really often, use Alt in order to select source. If you don't want your final image to look blotchy or look like it was combined from few different images, you need to carefully select where you copy pixels from and where you copy pixels for. So, the most important concept here is to follow the original lines that are already in photo. For example, when you're trying to restore this suit, it is obvious that you need to take and copy pixels from suit, but also, at least as important, is to copy the lines in direction of the original lines, because otherwise you'll distort and transform photo to look further from the original, not closer. And even if it will look good overall, you'll definitely lose some accuracy. Adjustment layers. Adjustment layers are important in pretty much anything in Photoshop, and for the restoration is not an exclusion. Probably the most used and most useful adjustment layer for photo restoration is curves. You can edit, change, improve, and even create details on the photo using the curves adjustment layer. Curves are commonly used in photo editing and photo retouching to alter the color and tones of the photograph. This adjustment layer is also an excellent tool for dealing with various types of stains, reflections and shadows that may have been present in the original photo, especially if it was photographed rather than scanned. For the moment, let's concentrate on repairing this suit. I was able to correct the reflection and shadows on the original photo by using curves. Then, combining them with regular layers and brush tool, I outlined the original silhouette of the suit's color. Now I can copy the other side of the color and match it with the outline using free transform tool and its warp functions. Don't worry and don't try to match it perfectly. At least for now we just generally need to follow and match the lines. We'll be able to fix and make it more precise by drawing some details back later. Now that we mostly matched the outline of suit, it's time to use mask and remove the areas that doesn't match with the original suit. Awesome, now that we removed those details and we have our layer on top a semi-transparent layer, we just can create a new layer on top of it and just use combination of brush, clone stamp and healing brush tool, we can fix and add more details to those areas. As you can see, I'm constantly switching between original photo and restored photo. And I'm going back to original photo just to check 
and compare the details how they looked on original and how they look in my restored version and then I just correct them using any tools mostly with regular layer and first adjustment layers now let's make it a bit slower so you'll be able to get a better idea of what I'm doing principle of following the lines is pretty important in anything you restore but it is especially important when you restore faces even the smallest changes to the lines of the face or surfaces and shapes of the face features can cause the significant deformation of the final there are several types of lines such as hard lines soft lines and something in between Hard lines are often lines that outline the outer features of the face, for example, here it is jaw that contrasts with background, ears and so on. Soft lines or more precisely soft areas of pixels are as important as hard lines. These areas are often larger and have smoother transitions. Because of this it's often much harder to notice and fix changes that you accidentally did to the image during the restoration and finally the mixed types of lines and details overall these are features and areas of the image that combines both soft and hard lines and have transition between them the good example of such areas and features of the face are nose lips and eyes in comparison to video games and cartoons, in reality we can very rarely see actual hard edges on pretty much anything. In reality almost any line we see is either soft line or some mixed type of line. So when drawing any videos, especially when it comes to face, because face is mostly soft tissues that cover the skull surface. Before finishing with face and especially with this terminator eye, let's just get back over the image and make it clearer overall. It'll help to reset your attention and be able to spot mistakes you made during the face restoration and then fix them. So now is finally time to do the most complex editing and fix the eye. There are several ways of how it can be done. In most cases, for the restoration artist, just create a new layer and then just use clone stamp tool or healing brush tool and copy the pupil from another eye that has it intact. While generally this approach works, there are quite a few problems with it. Main of them are that pupil will not match the actual lightning of the photo. And it also applies to eyelid, so eyelid also have both problems with not being matched by color and also having a mismatching shape. So to fix it, instead of copying just pupil, let's copy the whole eye. We can't and we shouldn't just leave eye as it is right now. Even after mirroring the eye, it still doesn't match light nor shape of the eye that we're trying to restore. All we need to do right now is just try to put the eye on exact position and exact angle of rotation as original eye was. To make this process easier it will be a good idea to temporarily make the layer semi-transparent. As you can see right now I'm trying to match the shape of the pupil to match the shape of the original pupil underneath and also to match the outline of the eyelids. Now that is mostly done, let's mask out all the extra pixels we don't need. So after checking and comparing it I just realized that actually only thing we need from the original image is the pupil and some small part of original eyelid. Now let's just clear the image by removing all the extra pixels that we don't need and proceed with drawing details back. The same principle of following the lines should be applied with special attention when you work with something so delicate like details of the eye. In such cases, the best idea is to use combination of few tools like clone stamp, Helen brush tool and just regular drawing brush tool to carefully draw back all the details that eye is missing. 
you just need to be careful because again with pretty much anything all the smallest changes to the lines may cause the huge changes of the final image look especially when you edit something so delicate as eye few small changes to eye will inevitably cause the change of the eye shape and it will cause the viewer and you to notice that something is off from the image it's not quite like original image looked like but it is impossible for most people to just understand what is wrong but even though they can't put it in words they can definitely feel it and see it you don't need to stress over it there are no chance to make a 100 percent correct and fully authentic copy of the original photo after restoration just because the fact that restoration is still editing of the photo so small changes will emerge inevitably all you need to do is just to spend some more time while working with those areas and paying them some special attention because those areas are one of the most important parts of the face and face is the most important part of the image so changes to these areas will inevitably make image look different from how it looked originally and if you strive to make image look as accurate as possible and still making sure it is good looking you need to pay some special attention and spend time trying to accurately restore those parts of image, make them look as little, as good, as natural as possible, and also try and match it with original lightning of this scene. Just carefully and slowly draw those details back, constantly comparing the image that you already restored with original image and then after it is done just use the adjustment layer in this case curve adjustment layer since it's it's most versatile for most cases and use it to draw the natural shadows that match original image lightning finally it's time to do color and tone corrections for this in layer top just select the top visible layer and create merged visible layer by clicking ctrl shift alt e then right click this layer and select convert to smart object and finally just press ctrl shift a to use the camera row filter from the camera row filter we'll only need to use few tabs it's basic tab and detail tab let's start with basic tab as you can probably notice the original image is a bit too faded so to fix it is it is good idea to use the contrast slider with this slider, as with pretty much any other slider here or in general in Photoshop, if you don't know which looks better, lower or higher contrast of the image, all you need to do is just try both extremes of this slider, so minus 100 and plus 100, and then to decide which one looks better. After this, all you need to do is just to decrease the value of each slider. So for example, if you felt plus 100 looked better than minus 100, then you need to do, for example, plus 15. Without going too, too deep in the theory, all you need to do is to just really play with those sliders using this principle. So trying plus 100, minus 100 and then deciding which looks best. And then instead of going to extreme using like some moderate values of this slider repeat this process as many times as you want but just make sure that edited photo look better than original you can do it by clicking the eye icon of the basic tab to turn off and, and turn on the preview and now let's do the same in the details tab simply speaking this tab is used to define how sharp or how soft the image will look how much noise texture and detail you want to see on your image or oppositely how much of it you want to remove from the image when working with all photos it is advised to try to at least partially remove the noise and improve the sharpness of the image quality of all photos is affected by their storage conditions their age their level of damage and the, even how they were scanned Almost inevitably there will be some particles of dust or visible texture of original printed photos and using camera filter often helps to partially decrease it. On this particular image, especially after zooming in, you can definitely see that 
it has pretty harsh texture. If don't remove or at least don't decrease it right now, it will definitely be visible on the restored photo, especially when it will be printed or even shared online and zoomed in. So to deal with it, we can again use the camera roll filter. You need to copy the layer that we worked previously by pressing Ctrl J and using camera roll filter again. It's important to use a new instance of the camera filter instead of editing the already existing one. As you can see it helped me to reduce and even eliminate the texture on most parts of the image. But in some areas we can still see it. So to finish the job let's use dust and scratches filter. As you can see inside the filter there are two sliders. Just drag them down to have the lowest value possible for the start. The top one decides the size of details that will be removed. Higher the value, the bigger the size of the removed details. Use up and down arrow keys to slowly increase the value until most of the texture is gone but image is not too blurry. You should look mostly at texture not at, at details of the image overall just because later we'll make sure those changes are only applied to texture but not to the image overall. Now just select this layer and while holding ALT just click on the layer mask button to click create the negative mask. Now make sure your brush color is white and start painting over the areas that has the most harsh texture. Try to be precise and don't draw over the facial features just because using this on top of them will remove all the important detail and information that we tried to save and recreate earlier. I can definitely recommend using brush tool with setup flow of around 6% or just using graphic tablet instead. It will help to do more drastic changes to one area and more subtle changes to another. Just spend some time relax and enjoy drawing over the areas to partially or fully remove texture from them. For even better precision you can also use any selection tool of your choice to separate details that you want to have more refined with this filter and detail that you don't want to touch at all or at least have the lower level of changes to them. In this case like his hair and face overall. It can be done on any stage of photo restoration or avoided altogether but I finally decided to make the photo black and white. I used black and white adjustment layer just because it allows the more precise control of how final image will look like. And also since black and white images don't have color, it allows me to focus more on actual details and shape of things instead of just being distracted by color, even if it's just sepia color. So this is one of the final stages of the manual photo restoration and photo enhancement where I go over back and forth between some details changing their shapes, adding more definition, adding more details, fixing mistakes I missed and generally just trying to make photo look better and more natural and as close to original as possible. After taking a short break and looking at photo I realized I can make it better so I decided to use camera roll filter once more to generally just enhance the quality and look of the image, especially its lightning conditions. So after doing all those small changes I can compare image before and after. Now I also can use curves adjustment layer and use its automatic functionality. For this find the auto button in uh, curves layer parameters tab and while holding alt click it. Without going too deep in the science just select one of our options that looks best. Then just use transparency to blend it better and make it look more natural. Ok now it's time to restore some texture and details of original clothing. For this we need to go to the Google and search for something like suit fabric, fabric texture or something like this and find the texture that generally looks the most matching with how original texture of this clothing was. It's not as easy to find something that matches the texture of clothing but again all we can do is the best guess. For sake of simplicity let's use this one since it generally looks similar it has good enough resolution and quality to be used for this. So now let's just save it to use in our forestration. After you save the file, 
just drag it inside your Photoshop file and drop it. Then press Enter to confirm the placement of the photo. Then you can press Ctrl U to call the hue saturation layer and remove the color from the texture. And then use transform tool to match the size and the shape of the texture with suit underneath it. Similar as before, now it's time to create the negative mask and using the brush tool to draw those details only on top of the suit and nowhere else. As you can see here I'm trying to draw it only on top of the suit without affecting the shirt, background, tie and so on. To be the most precise I even decided to use the selection tool. Again it's not problem when you're working with masks and something like this you can always go back and fix your mistakes. Trying to be as precise as it can be from the very start can save time and improve the final quality. Now it's time when I can zoom in and do all the precise changes to the overall shape of the texture, trying to match it with good with actual shape of suit as possible. Then zooming out and just looking how it looks and changing blending modes to something that works best in this case. There is no rule of which one to use and which one will look best, so just try a few of them and decide for yourself. Now in general this texture looks good and it matches the shape of the suit, but it still looks unnatural. To fix this let's use blending options. To call this menu just double click layer in layer panel. There are quite a few sliders here, but all you need are those two sliders in blend if option and to be honest you only need the bottom one in most cases. Simply said, the top slider affects what pixels of this layer will be removed from this layer, while bottom one affects what pixels of this layer will be removed from all layers underneath it. I understand that it still sounds kinda hard to understand, so just try it a few times and play with it to see the difference how it works and how it affects the image. Now that the image is mostly done, let's have one more layer of polishing details and compare it to the original photo before we can proceed with AI. Now just go to File, Save Image as Copy and save it as JPEG. And now it's finally time for AI photo enhancement. For some people, especially people outside of the photo editing photo restoration world, it looks like AI is one click tool that being used on the very beginning and does most of the job for, instead of you. In reality, at least as of now, AI is only a supporting tool that can be used at finish to polish your result, but not to restore or colorize your photos autonomously. You can try and use any GPF GAN based AI to enhance and restore your photos. Although in most cases this tool is more than enough, it didn't work with this photo in particular, so instead of it I decided to use my regular photo enhancement AI. So I just used Topaz Photo AI, I'll upload photo I want to have enhanced. Then I'll play with some setting to make sure I'll get the best quality result. I have to try to apply some changes and creating few different copies so I can have options to pick from, I think it's enough. The simplicity I'll just pick the best one and drag it inside of Photoshop. While still being the better quality sometimes new layer appears to be smaller than the original layer so all you need to do is just fit them. You can see the difference it makes by turning off and on visibility of this layer. As you can see, the AI enhanced layer looks much more sharp and much more details, but somewhat more fake. In order to fix this, all you need to do is firstly make the layer partially transparent and secondly, you just can create mask and make sure you put those AI enhanced details only in places where they are needed and you don't have this artificial sharpness in other areas that should stay natural and soft. And now it's finally time when we can compare before and after the restoration. Even though main focus here was speed and simplicity, I still think that final result looks both good and natural. So we started with all in damage photo, then we restored and enhanced it, and finally we manually polished it and enhanced it with AI. 
I hope this video was interesting and useful to you. If you are looking to learn how to colorize this photo, check this video next. Goodbye.